Here I have a Pyraminx and a Skew. Two very different puzzles, right? Wrong. They're very, very similar. Let's break them down. Okay, right, so we have now broken down these pieces. So we can ignore the tips of Pyraminx, they're irrelevant. Does this not look similar? Yeah, because it is. You see, these corners on a scube are the fixed corners. There are four of them. There are four of them on a Pyraminx. So a scube is the same in this regard. Now, let's have a look. What are the other pieces? So we have these pieces, which are just one color the centers of a scube, which are the same as the edges of the pyraminx. There are six of them. And of course, we have these other four corners of the scube, which are the same as the invisible centers in the middle of the pyraminx. Right, now why did I make this video? Well, I want to explain how to reassemble a scube and how to reassemble a pyraminx because it seems a lot of people don't know. And if I called the video how to reassemble a scube or how to reassemble a pyraminx, hardly anybody would watch it. But if I say something controversial like a scube is a pyraminx, then people actually watch it. But if you click off this video and don't let me explain how to reassemble a scube and a pyraminx, well, I hope your scube or pyraminx completely explodes next time you're solving it. Right, okay, so let's start with the scoop. So, we have this piece. Now, this piece goes underneath the corners, and then the next, this bit will then link to another corner or center. So we first put this piece in, and then we can put another piece in, making sure that it's actually solved. So now I've got these two in, and obviously they can flex around a bit, so try and hold them carefully in place. And then you can put the first other corner or center on Pyraminx, invisible center on Pyraminx. Okay, now we can put the third one on, and of course the skew will begin to get a bit more stable now. You can see like this, and then We've got a slightly more challenging job of getting these final centers in. So just kind of slide them in a bit, make sure that the corner doesn't get twisted there. Okay, so we've got that one in, and now we can try and get the last few centers and corners in. So let's put this center in here this edge, using Pyraminx terminology. I think most people call them centers on skew. Right, there we go. Now, this one can go in here. This one can go in here. And now we have the fiddly bit because, well, these don't flex apart enough for it to go in normally. So we have to move this around slightly and try and put it in on the halfway point. And then it clicks in place, put the skew back. Obviously, sometimes it'll be on tight attention, so it'll be a bit more difficult, and skews are a bit more difficult to loosen. Obviously, you, there's screws on the four fixed corners, corners on the pyraminx. Okay, right, what about a pyraminx? Well, this is gonna be a lot more Simple because the centers are invisible, so you don't need to worry about them, but Offset this by 45 degrees and push that in Same here offset that slightly push that in Same here offset that slightly push that in now you're on to your final three pieces this isn't difficult at all, is it? Just a bit of force. Pyraminxes don't have many pieces. They can withstand a bit of force, I think. And final piece, offset it a bit, then force it in. And you've got a reassembled Pyraminx. 
So yeah, a pair of rings is a skew, and hopefully you now know how to reassemble it. So when your um, skew explodes, you know what to do. Oh no, I guess I'm gonna have to do it all over again. 